Got my chores pretty well whipped outside. I got washed up in the back porch. And I would like to welcome you to the Kitchen at Wolfpack Ranch. I'm L.J. Martin. We're located here in the shadow of Montana's beautiful, beautiful Sapphire Mountains from the incredibly lovely Pacific Northwest. I love all the states up here. Well, I love all the states all over, every place I have ever been. And we've been able to travel a lot, and we've been able to collect lots of recipes. And uh, brought them back here to share with you folks here. We're going to have some fun in the kitchen. I'm blessed to be married to Kat Martin, who's a New York Times best-selling uh, author. She writes romantic suspense and historical romance, and is published in over a dozen languages and more than twice that many countries. Consequently, we've been able to travel over a good part of the world. We've been to, well, golly, Ireland, Scotland, England, uh, Holland, France, uh, uh, Spain, Italy a lot. Love Italy. Uh, been to some little strange places like Andorra. Been in around South America a little bit and, and uh, Central America a little bit and enjoyed the Caribbean a lot. And, and Mexico. Been in Mexico quite a little bit. And I've enjoyed the South Pacific a couple of times. Anyway, we've, uh, I've always elbowed my way into lots of wonderful kitchens and uh, looked over the shoulders of some great chefs and, and, and had fun doing that and even more fun with a lot of country, good old country cooks. Uh, I like straightforward food. I love the flavor of food. Spices are secondary for me. And uh, if you like good food, you're in the right place. I gotta warn you that this show is rated. It's rated C for country. And we're going to have a lot of good country fun. I'm going to cook mostly things that, uh, that you can find in your own country marketplace. Not too many fancy things. Uh, we like to take food from the mundane to the magnificent. And uh, that's what we're all about here. I'm going to take a peek in the pantry. I'm going to see what's on the menu for today. And I want you to take a peek at Wolfpack Ranch and, and beautiful Montana where we have some of the great beef in the world, wonderful, wonderful lamb, incredible pork, um, super duper game all over our mountains here, deer and elk and, and uh, antelope and, and lots of wonderful birds, ducks and geese, of course, and, and grouse and, and pheasants. And, and just, I, I just can't tell you how much I enjoy waking here. I, I wake up with a silly grin every morning. Okay, I'm going to take a peek at the pantry. You take a peek around Montana Wolfpack Ranch, and I'll be right back. Now, don't you dare go away. I got things uh, pretty well put together here, I think. I checked out the... Uh, the pantry and came up with some baby back ribs. I love baby back ribs. I've been cooking them for a long time in my life. Cook them lots of different ways. Cook them outside when the weather's good. Cook them on the, on the barbecue. But uh, the real wonderful way to cook them is to cook them real slow in the oven. 290 degrees, three hours. Take them out, season them up, throw them on the grill, cook that seasoning on. Uh, we're going to do it a little different today. We're going to put a put a paste on them, a little bit of put paste on them before we put it in the oven just to try them out. Then we're going to do some spaghetti with uh, puttanesca sauce. Puttanesca is an interesting name. came from uh, ladies of the night in Italy uh, who, who had to make an inexpensive sauce. And this was, I guess, the, the way to do it. So, and strange, I got this funny little guy here that is a spaghetti serving. Uh, measurer. My wife, I believe, bought me this because I always cook too much spaghetti. This actually, when you fill one of these rings up, and that happens to be the ring for two servings right there. Get these guys out. I got too much. What a surprise. Okay, there's, there's two servings. So I'll have just the right amount of spaghetti. Actually, I'm cheating myself just a little bit. A few more strands, maybe. And uh, to, for just cat and I. And that's the way I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook two slabs of back ribs, which is probably more than we'll eat. But it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be delicious, nutritious. It's going to stick to your ribs. And you and your family are going to love it. 
Okay, I'm going to uh, get my rub ready to go here. I got things pretty well laid out. This rub is going to be a little 8 ounce can of uh, tomato sauce, which is uh, a little Italian flavor to this guy. A whole uh, tablespoon of, uh, of Italian seasoning. You know, Italian seasoning is all the great seasonings all mixed up together. The, thyme and, uh, and uh, basil and, and allspice and lots of good stuff all, all in it, but you just buy it as a seasoning. I got a little bit of a kick here. We're going to put a, uh, a quarter of a taste, teaspoon of uh, beautiful red cayenne pepper in there just to lighten things up a little bit, make everybody skip. I've got a half a, a teaspoon of black powder, black pepper, pardon me. Half a teaspoon of kosher salt or whatever kind of salt you like to use. I got a, uh, a, table, a teaspoon full of uh, uh, garlic powder, and because I like the flavor that it adds, I'm going to use a full tablespoon of beef bouillon granules. They're just want to add a wonderful flavor to things. These are going to cook real slow, so we're not going to they're not going to burn anything on the uh, uh, on the ribs. Speaking of ribs, I buy these in larger packages and uh, cut them. This is a one slab cut in half, which is all cat and I'll eat. And uh, just make sure when you do these guys that there's a little membrane on the back side of them. I take the pliers and I just pull that little membrane off. It's a little hard to get to and, uh, once in a while and will not be the easiest little job you ever done, but when you get a piece of that membrane, you got to chew and chew and chew. You'll you'll know you haven't done it. I always do it before I uh, separate them up, put them in packages too for cat and I, put them back in the put them back in the freezer. Got a uh, nice little pan here, all actually glass, all ready to go. Got I got it lined with foil because I'm lazy and I don't have to clean this big mess up later. So we're going to put that on. Then I'm going to put it in that oven, but I'm going to cover it. Uh, when I do, I'm going to put about a, a uh, three quarters of an inch of water in the bottom of this so it steams nice. I'm going to cover it. We're going to cook it long and slow just so they are falling off the bone. We decide we're going to take them off and throw them under the broiler and brown this, these wonderful little guys perfectly. That would give them the majority of the flavor. This would give them some. We're going to use this again before we throw them under there and brown it. Oh, what a wonderful aroma coming off that rub paste in this instance might be more appropriate term. One of the advantages of canned tomatoes is, you know, they let them get right before they pick them. And you, and you always get them nice and, and ripe and ready to rock and roll, as opposed to some of those that are picked too early. One of the advantages of frozen foods, we're getting lots of wonderful Frozen and canned foods these days. Much better than those anemic looking stuck attached to peas that you used to get when I was a kid. There we go, we're just gonna wrap it up, make the steam get to it. I didn't put the water in it, gotta do that. I'm gonna put a little square of water in there. There we go, now we're going in. Nice center rack, 290 degrees.
set this aside to dress that with before we throw it in the broiler. Now let's mess around with our puttanesca sauce. Okay, for the basis of this puttanesca, instead of having a little tomato sauce like I had in the last one, I got the medium sized can of, uh, of wonderful chopped uh, Italian flavored tomatoes right uh, this time, but any chopped tomato is fine because they don't have those Italian flavors, just throw a teaspoon of uh, Italian seasoning in it like we did the last time. Now we're going to add some of our wonderful spices to this. Okay, we got our tomatoes, our diced tomatoes. I'm going to put a, a little white onion in this. We're going to start this in the pan and we're going to soften this white onion in some olive oil. And, uh, Maybe just a little touch of butter, although the Italians aren't real high on cooking with butter. I am, and I'm cooking in my kitchen, and just like you cook things in your kitchen, do it your way. Do it the way your family loves it, do it the way you love it. These recipes are adaptable. Let's do this guy in. I got a nice little frying pan over here. Okay, a little olive oil. There's a generous tablespoon. I'm just gonna drop these in and let them rock and roll. We're gonna do some of those. We're gonna do a little green onion tops. We're gonna do some mushrooms. I'm going to do the red wine. What would puttanesca sauce be without red wine? And the surprise ingredient, anchovies. Got to have a little anchovies in there. While that's cooking, I'm going to take out our one generous onion. I think that needs to be washed one more time. Spices. I've got a little short of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Like that, here we go. We're going to mix this up real well. I'm going to sometimes in these bottles that, that uh, it tricks you. You throw one on there and it's not uh, not a cork. Okay, there's a quarter cup of red wine and this little guy. Again, we're going to mix him up. And then we're going to begin to cook it slowly as soon as we get these onions soft, softened and reduce it down. I got a, three nice brown onions. Three nice brown uh, mushrooms, three nice white cremini mushrooms. And we're just gonna, I like mushrooms, so instead of 
chopping these up into little tiny pieces, we're going to quarter these nice buttons. This would be probably a half a cup of, of nice hefty chunks of mushrooms, maybe a tad more than that. Pretty hard to have too many mushrooms in anything that you cook. It's vegetables or main dish or meat or whatever it is you want to add, add them to. I don't know that you get a lot of nutrition certainly out of mushrooms, but and, but I just like them. I, I think they're wonderful to, to uh, use. Nice consistency, nice pretty brown earthy color to them. We of course pick a lot of mushrooms right here in the in the mountains behind us and we had some fires this year it's one of the dangers of living in, uh, in beautiful green country it dries out and you get some fires and we go you know you could throw a little celery in that you could do throw a lot of things to it I'm gonna let it cook a little bit before I add half of this Parsley, half of it I'm going to leave, leave nice and green to, to uh, top the dish and make it, make it pretty. We're going to do that. Now, where have I hidden my, there, a snake out, been a snake out of them bit right in front of my eyes. Beautiful, beautiful little anchovies. Now, if you haven't, if you don't have an affinity for anchovies, if you're, not, don't enjoy the flavor of them. Don't use them. Just because those are Italian girls of the night use them doesn't mean you have to. I'm going to drain half of this juice off. Half of the oil off of them. About half of it I'm going to leave in there. I'm going to use a whole can of these guys. We're not going to tell Kat. She's not as fond of them as I am. But maybe we can fool her. Pretty hard to pull though. Okay, look at those little guys come. Now we're just gonna let this guy cook down. I might see if we got a nice little green vegetable, or maybe I, we can make a beautiful green salad for us to serve with this. I think that's the, the best addition to it. One of these days I'm, we're gonna do a Grilled romaine salad. I think if anybody would have told me a few years ago that I was grilling romaine, I would have told them they were crazy. But, but a good friend of mine who's a decorator down in the south and is a wonderful gourmet cook called me up and said, Have you grilled any romaine? And I said, No. And she said, Well, you got to do this. And I did it. She taught, put a little olive oil on it, throw it on the grill, and top it with some balsamic and some, some uh, bacon. And, and uh, uh, beautiful gorgonzola or, or any of the blue, nicely blue marble cheeses it works wonderful on there. A couple of nice red cherry tomatoes in the side, and it's a it's a knockout. It's a actually you can do it as a as an entree if you have a big enough head of romaine to do it that way. Okay, I'm going to let you go take a peek at Montana and Wolfpack Ranch, figure out the, which is an easy figure why we live live up here and why we love it. this little pen, beautiful nice pen that I picked up at the Aldrovandi Palace in Rome. I thought that's appropriate that I'm making notes with this pen I got from the hotel in Rome overlooking the zoo by the way, and an absolutely spectacular hotel. And, um, while we were cooking something with a little Italian bit to it. Not bad, huh? Okay, here we go. Let's take a peek. I've got my water boiling. I have a salted water boiling. I got my two servings of uh, uh, 
of uh, pasta here, a little spaghettini, a small pasta. I'm going to drop that in there. Hot. That's hot. That's funny how that fire does that. Okay, I've got uh, my ribs ready to come out of here. I hope they're ready. Oh, golly, they're so ready to walk. I'm going to take, just for fun of it, of it let's take a look at that. Oh, geez, so nice. Just, just coming apart. We're going to put them in the broiler. Pop that open just a little bit so that overhead broiler starts going. I'm going to dress them one more time this wonderful sauce rub that we made up look at that go on there Woo. then let's make a tea start going As soon as my spaghetti done is done, as soon as we get a little brown on those beautiful ribs. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. I think we got ourselves. Oh, we do. Pasta is perfecto. I got a, uh, a little calendar, calendar over here. We're going to drain this while we do a couple other little tricks. We are going to pull our ribs. Seven. Set that okay, right there. Just long enough to get them off. There we go. There it is, right there. There's one and a two. We are going to move this out of place so you can see what's going on over here. Okay, now let's make a plate out of it. Knife just glides through like it should. Need to serve these with a nice napkin so I can pick them up. Okay. Put this little guy out of the way. Put this here. We're going to do this beautiful pasta. Zena. And that's a good serving right there. Just a little bit more. Pretty. I'm gonna set this out of the way until I get ready to do my plane. anything left except her. Look at this. 
Now if that's not a plate fit for a king of Florence, I don't know what is. That is so gorgeous, I can't even begin to tell you. We're going to grab a bite to eat. Uh, don't you dare go away, we're going to be right back. Okay, a little uh, thought for the day. Courtesy is owed, respect is earned, love is given. It's been great having you here at the uh, kitchen at Wolfpack Ranch. Love to have you come back any old time. Watch for us, we'll be around. You take good care of yourself. Hugs to you and your family from Cat and I. Uh, tell everybody you love them. See you soon. <laughs>